Greetings to Tour de Force Productions. I'm, of course, Derek Force, the proprietor. You know, I've been in publishing for over 40 years. And by that I mean books, magazines and calendars. I've got a couple of examples in front of me. Postcards, for example, and calendars such as this. Now, my first camera was a Hasselblad 500CM film camera. And I handheld every outdoor shot. And my publishers accepted my pictures and used them because they were sharp. Now, I hold the view, the very traditional view, that any reasonably fit person can be able to handhold a camera most cameras at 125th of a second, provided it has a standard or wide angle lens. Later, I progressed to Olympus and saw at close hand the development of their four thirds and micro four thirds cameras, and they have supported my work during that time. Now, these pictures, these uh, reproductions I have just shown you, weren't taken with the Hasselblad. They were taken with an Olympus digital camera. And I've got one of the cameras here. And, well, dare I say, in front of Olympus, this is not a posh camera. This is their entry-level camera into the OMD series. So instead of costing thousands of pounds, it costs hundreds of pounds and the lens on it is the 12 to 50. Yes, it is a kept lens, so it can't be any good, but it, it did produce those pictures you have just seen. In fact, I consider this a superb lens at, shall we say, a slightly lower price. Now, the picture on the screen now is of Richmond upon Thames. And I'd like to take you through now three important points that make micro four thirds in landscape work for me so important. And we can see one in the first picture, and that is depth of field. Those information boards are sharp as well as the background. The factor was F8, and I held and held the camera. And I'm now going to go into a little bit more detail with this picture and some others as to why I use micro four thirds for my landscape pictures and can get my work published in quality publications. It would be a mistake to assume that with micro four thirds you cannot have differential focusing. You can when required. But here we see the opposite end of the spectrum at Ragged Hill, where this view indicator is sharp as well as the background. Now, I'm a naughty photographer in the sense that I do everything incorrectly. Naughty, 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 because I used F16 and I'm risking diffraction. Well, unfortunately, I can't show you yet, but this picture is scheduled for reproduction on a calendar. So, despite F16 a naughty, naughty Derek, it must be okay. But, let's be serious. The other thing I've done is to employ the hyperfocal distance. What's that, I hear you say? Well, if you don't know what the hyperfocal distance is, then you don't know much about real traditional photography, do you? Infinity kicks in at about 150 feet, 200 feet away from the photographer. So anything beyond that is can be regarded as infinity. So what I do is to bring the point of focus forward don't forget, sharpness extends twice as much behind the point of focus than in front. So by bringing the point of focus forward about one third into the picture, say setting it manually to about 50 feet, 
that ensures that the tablet view indicator in the foreground is also sharp as well as the background. Traditional photographic advice to sort out an image and forget what the soothsayers say about diffraction because it's going to end up in a calendar. So there we are. The importance of extended depth of field sharpness from front to back may be less obvious with this picture but that building through the gap we can regard as infinity. I would say it's at least 150 feet away. So therefore like in the last picture I employ the hyperfocal distance by bringing the focusing point forward. Also I have used aperture priority as I did in the last shot but now on f8. Of course I've handheld the camera and that is increasingly important with this picture. Normally there are people milling about here but fortunately the museum on this particular day was closed. Nevertheless that is a busy road. That is West Street in Dorking. That is a busy road. You've got cars going by and people as well. Therefore, you've got to work quickly. There's no point in faffing about with apertures and shutter speeds. Just set the camera up quickly and take the shot. And if I'm honest with you, this is number four. The other three had either cars or people in it. So you have to be a little patient. The camera I showed you a moment ago does not have weather seals so you wouldn't willingly take it out in weather like this. It was tipping it down with rain and oh boy did I get wet. But I used on this occasion one of the more expensive cameras in the OMD range, the EM1. That does have weather seals. And I'm happy to say that the camera is still working perfectly today. And not only was it raining, there was quite a strong wind as well. In fact, what's rather amusing about this picture, the train, of course, well, I hope you think this is the case, is going from left to right. But because the wind was blowing from the left, blowing the smoke from the engine in front of the train, it looks for all the world as if it is going backwards. Oh dear, disaster has struck my photography. Look closely at this picture. There's dust on the sensor. Oh dear, I'll have to get my sensor cleaned, won't I? No, I won't. That is not dust. Again, like the last picture, I'm suffering for my art. It's not rain this time, but hailstones. And again, even if I can't, I, the camera can handle this sort of situation. When Olympus launched the E1 camera back in 2003, they solved the problem then of dust and other foreign elements reaching the sensor. Something, dare I say, other manufacturers today have not sorted out. Not so with Olympus. I have never had sent a camera back to Olympus for sensor cleaning. Because some of the Olympus Four Thirds and Micro Four Thirds cameras have weather seals, then it's perfectly okay and safe to take it out in inclement weather or, as here, look at the waves carefully the wind is blowing, blowing the sea spray up, which could so easily damage the camera, not the camera I am using. So I can happily 
wander around West Wittering Beach in this fantastic light and get the shots I am looking for. So as an interval and as a rest from my voice, here now is a musical interlude. I'm sure, like me, you've taken sunsets, but where the location permits, have you ever looked in the other direction? That is what we're doing with this shot of Loch Leven, which is picking up the ambient light of the sunset, which of course is behind me. But I'm showing you this picture for another reason. The third quality I like in Olympus Four Thirds and Micro Four Thirds cameras is the amazing, yes it is, amazing image stabilization. The shutter speed for this shot was a 25th of a second. Now in the days of my Hasselblad cameras I wouldn't safely shoot at a 25th of a second but because of the image stabilization in Olympus cameras I can quite safely do that and at longer shutter speeds. A few years ago when I had a group of photographers with me we thought that we would walk down at night time to the beach at Lulworth Cove. Not really with the intention of being serious about taking pictures. You can saturate things. We had a jolly good day and we just wanted to relax after an excellent evening meal. And so down we went to the beach and of course as you, that's the moon by the way, not the sun. And I did of course always take a camera, you know, but I just, I don't know what I was thinking at the time quite honestly, but I just took this shot and afterwards I looked at the shutter speed. I was on program so the camera was doing whatever it thought was best. You know I know it's not real photography but very often when you do things without thinking you get some rather interesting shots and the shutter speed here was one second. And then now I don't know what I did I was probably completely out of my mind, as I am most of the time anyway, but I took another shot and I looked at the metadata. And it's the next picture. And do you know what? The shutter speed was an eight, not an eighth, eight whole seconds. How on earth it sharp? I haven't sharpened it in Photoshop or anything like that. This is pretty well a straight photograph. And quite frankly, I'm gobsmacked and lost for words. Well, I hope this brief excursion into the Olympus digital technology four thirds and micro four thirds gives you some idea just how good it is. And as I've said before, although I have an expensive camera, which incidentally is being used now to record this uh, video, so I can't uh, really show it to you, but many of pictures are taken with this inexpensive camera if you can call it a budget camera, and I have been told off incidentally for saying that, but it is considerably cheaper than many of the other Olympus models.
levels. And if you invest in a camera like this, it does produce superb pictures. And for me, the acid test is, can it get published? Can I get it published? And on one occasion, when I was talking to a publisher, Derek, she said, she turned around to me, I couldn't care, couldn't care, damn or cam, which camera you're using. Or even if you were standing in six feet of water, she did add that answer. Maybe it was wishful thinking on what I was prattling on about. She said, if it looks okay on our computer and it shows what we want, we'll go and use it. So there we are. I leave you with that thought as part of my epilogue.